What's up guys, welcome to another range day. Today we're gonna to be shooting an oldie but a goodie, my CZ Scorpion SBR. Guys, if you enjoy the content that I'm making, then please make sure to like and subscribe and leave me a message down in the comments section. I hate asking, but it really does help with the algorithm a lot, so I'd really appreciate it. And if you ring the bell icon, you should get notifications when new videos are released as well. Additionally, if you want more Chester's Hobbies content, you can follow me on Instagram where you can see what I'm working on and get previews of upcoming videos. I'm also pretty active on Reddit if you'd like to follow along with the conversations there. All right, that's enough of that. So back to the gun of the day, my CZ Scorpion SBR. So guys, the Scorpion was actually the very first pistol caliber carbine that I purchased all the way back in 2017. It was a great way to get my feet wet in the PCC game and definitely helped me fall in love with 9mm pistol caliber carbines. Now, the original one that I purchased was actually the full length rifle version with a faux suppressor which I later sold after I picked up this one that you see here in 2018. I just love having short barrels in 9mm PCC so this configuration made more sense for me in the long run. The CZ Scorpions are pretty iconic in the world of PCCs. In my opinion they're really accessible and represent some of the best bang for the buck you can get in the category and they have an excellent aftermarket with tons of customization options as well which is really wonderful in my opinion because while a CZ Scorpion and its stock configuration is relatively capable. There's a lot of room for improvement and most of the aftermarket upgrades are pretty affordable, easy to install and offer really satisfying improvements. Now, there's really a lot to love about the CZ Scorpion platform in general. The manual of arms is excellent with modern improvements like last round bolt hold open and the easily accessible bolt release lever while also giving you the ability to lock the bolt back and slap it forward like an HK MP5, which works great and is really satisfying as well. It's cool that there are a few different options and ways to accomplish the same task with this gun. It keeps things interesting and makes this platform versatile and accessible. It also comes from the factory with an ambidextrous safety and the direct blowback operating system the Scorpion uses is inherently reliable. On top of that, the CZ Scorpion magazines are excellent and also happen to be some of the most affordable pistol caliber carbine magazines on the market. The OEM magazines are typically very reliable and third-party companies like Magpul and even Palmetto State Armory's Scorpion patterned AKV magazines work great and are even more affordable. The PSA magazines in particular even add steel feed lips, which is excellent. Now there are of course some downsides to the Scorpion as well. The direct blowback operation with the Scorpion's fairly heavy bolt results in higher felt recoil and sight disturbance than other platforms like the MPX, MP5, or CMMG Banshee, for example. But if you're not recoil sensitive, it really isn't too bad and still a lot of fun to shoot. For some people though, the Scorpion is more than they're comfortable with from a recoil standpoint. That can be understandable, but personally, I still love it. That being said, direct blowback 9mm PCCs tend to have more recoil than even a 5.56 AR, so it's worth noting that the recoil of being heavy for the caliber is definitely valid in my opinion. Otherwise, the trigger that comes from the factory is heavy and mushy and pretty awful, honestly. It's really pretty bad, or at least it was back in 2018 when I originally purchased this one. It's possible the newer ones are a little bit better. Fortunately, that's easily fixed with a wide variety of aftermarket trigger options, some of which aren't really that expensive compared to the level of improvement they provide. The right side safety also has a tendency to dig into a right-handed shooter's trigger finger as well, which can be pretty uncomfortable. And the magazine release on the 2018 model was pretty small as well. And there have been a ton of iterations of the Scorpion over the years, including the S2 Micro and the more recently released S3 Plus. There's even a ridiculous looking bullpup conversion kit that they offer. To each his own, I suppose, but I definitely think it's cool that CZ has been continuing to support and improve upon the Scorpion over the years, and that's really nice to see. Now, as for my example here, this was originally purchased as an 8-inch Scorpion Evo 3 S1 pistol in 2018, and I initially added an SB Tactical folding brace and ran it like that for a year or so before filing the Form 1 to turn it into an SB. Once I had the approved Form 1, I swapped out the brace for the standard CZ Scorpion OEM folding stock, which I absolutely love. It's really comfortable against a shoulder with a great cheek weld, and I love that it uses a small magnet for retention when folded. It's really neat. The other SBR specific thing that I added was this Troy vertical grip, which I find really comfortable and allows me to get a good thumb over bore grip even with the large Scorpion handguard. It gives me a ton of leverage for recoil control and just feels really ergonomic and handy to me. There are a lot of handguard options out there for the Scorpion these days, but I'm personally kind of partial to this original Scorpion look. I think it looks a bit more visceral than the modern m style design, so I'm definitely a fan of this configuration. I know some people don't really like the weird shape or the shorter sight radius or the lack of a pick rail on top, but the way I have mine configured, I actually find it really comfortable to get my thumb over the slanted part of the handguard. To each his own, of course, but it works really well for me. Other than that, I made a bunch of other fun upgrades as well. I've actually cycled through several different iterations of many of the parts on here, but for today, we're mostly just going to be talking about the configuration that I'm currently running. Got the HB Industries Delta Extended Charging Handle, a Gearhead Works Extended Paddle Style Mag Release Lever, which makes stripping a magazine for reloads really easy. I kept my left side safety stock, but then I went with the HB Industries Mini AK Style Safety on the right, which I love. Currently running the Magpul Scorpion and pistol grip, which I find really comfortable with a great texture. I've got a Parker Mountain Machine QD sling point that works great with my Savvy Sniper sling. Now for years, I had the HB Industries Delta Trigger with a reduced spring weight trigger kit. And I did unfortunately have one of the notorious welded trigger packs, so that was definitely a fun upgrade initially. I was pretty happy with that trigger overall, but a buddy of mine recently installed the Timney Trigger in his Scorpion, and after trying a few shots with his, I decided that I wanted to try it on mine as well. So I actually just installed this Timney V2 trigger last night. The install was really quick and easy, and it feels great in dry fire, so I'm really excited to see how it goes today. Then on the muzzle, because this is an older Scorpion with a really unusual 18 by one thread pitch, I had to get this HK Parts 3 lug adapter that interfaces with the odd thread pitch and detent systems found on the original Scorpions. It's a little bit on the odd side, but it does work well for me. I use it to attach my dead Airwolf Man suppressor. And lastly, I've got my favorite red dot, the Holosun 503GU on top, which co-witnesses nicely with the excellent CZ Scorpion iron sights. So that's what we got going on today, guys. I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to be a lot of fun revisiting what's essentially my first love when it comes to 9mm pistol caliber carbines. Well, it's been a while since I've shot this thing, so let's hit the range and see how my old school CZ Scorpion SBR performs.
So guys, I want to give you a little bit of an idea of the difference between shooting the CZ Scorpion SBR unsuppressed versus suppressed. So we're going to start off with two shots unsuppressed with supersonic ammo, slow fire into the dirt. Then I'm going to attach my dead air Wolfman and fire three more shots suppressed with subsonic ammo, also slow fire into the dirt. So let's start with two shots unsuppressed. Okay. Suppressed. Oh man, guys, I had so much fun with the Scorpion today, honestly. The heavier recoil over something like an MP5 or an MPX is definitely noticeable, but also gives it a really intense and visceral feel. And if I really leverage that vertical grip and pull the stock hard into my shoulder, it's still pretty easy to control under rapid fire. And speaking of rapid fire, this Timney trigger is honestly kind of insane. It's a really, really light and crisp single stage break with an extremely short and tactile reset. It's absolutely wild, and honestly, it might be one of my new favorite PCC triggers. The heavier recoil of the Scorpion does hold it back from being the fastest PCC out there, but the stock and even HB Industries triggers held it back more. And this Timney V2 trigger really boosts the performance in my opinion. So I put about 275 rounds to this gun with absolutely no failures, which is what I expected. It's definitely a lot more than I was planning on shooting, but I was just having so much fun, I didn't want to stop. The other thing that surprised me today is I forgot just how pleasant this gun is to shoot with quality 150 grain subsonic ammunition suppressed. It's actually noticeably softer shooting with less muzzle and sight movement as well. I only ran the Wolfman in short configuration today. I could have also run it in long, but I think it balances a lot better with the short and it's still plenty quiet for me. So as for my updated thoughts on the individual components, after shooting this gun for the first time in quite a while. I think this Troy vertical grip works perfectly on here. It gives me a ton of leverage when shooting rapid fire. The HB Industries Delta extended charging handle works great for me. I love the Gearhead Works extended paddle mag release. It makes reloads quick and easy. The grip angle with this Magpul pistol grip is really, really nice. It's a much more vertical angle than the stock pistol grip, which is exactly what I like on short barrel platforms. I absolutely love this OEM CZ folding stock. It's extremely comfortable and highly functional, really easy to fold, and I think it looks perfect on the gun. The Holosun 503 GU co-witnesses perfectly with the iron sights. I love being able to switch back and forth between a red dot and a circle dot. I've mostly been just using red dots lately, but I actually used a circle dot today and had a lot of fun with it. And as previously mentioned, I'm kind of obsessed with this V2 Timney trigger. It's so light and crisp. It's honestly significantly better than many AR triggers out there. It really blows me away what they were able to do with this. There are two caveats or slight negatives that I have with this trigger though. Installing this trigger does seem to remove the ability to put the gun on safe while the hammer is forward, which is a little disappointing, but it's really not a big deal for general use. The other thing I noticed is that the safety detent that comes with the Timney trigger is a little bit of a less positive click than the stock trigger pack. That was a little disappointing to me because I really like the positive click that 
came with a stock trigger pack. But honestly, this Timney trigger is absolutely worlds better than anything that would go in the stock trigger pack. So I'm willing to accept the slight downgrade in the safety. In truth, the safety works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's just slightly less positive and a little bit more mushy than it used to be. So honestly, I'm kind of nitpicking a little bit. At the end of the day, the trigger is just phenomenal. This Parker Mountain Machine QD sling point works perfectly with my Savvy Sniper sling. So I'm really happy with that. I love the Dead Air Wolfman on all my PCCs and the Scorpion is definitely no different. It quiets the gun down nicely. It's nice and handy in the short configuration. And overall, it just runs beautifully for me. The other thing to keep in mind when judging the sound of the CZ Scorpion when shooting suppressed is that because of the direct blowback operation of the gun, the fact that there's no delay in the reciprocation of the bolt does mean that you get a significant amount of port pop when shooting suppressed. So that's definitely a pretty significant limitation when you put it up against something like the MP5, the MPX, or the CMMG Banshee, all of which have some sort of operating mechanism that delays the reciprocation of the bolt and really minimizes that port pop. It's definitely not a huge deal. It's still very quiet, but it's definitely never going to be as quiet as one of those other options. So yeah, guys, I think that about covers it. In my opinion, I think the CZ Scorpion is one of the absolute best values when it comes to pistol caliber carbines. The cost of entry isn't too steep. The quality and reliability is there. And there's a ton of inexpensive and easy to install aftermarket options as well. The one asterisk I will add to that is that this Timney trigger is definitely not in line with the pricing of other third party aftermarket parts. But if you've got a Scorpion and you love it and you want to push it up to 11, I think this is definitely the biggest upgrade you can do. There's definitely a lot of things to consider when comparing different PCCs if you can only have one. I'm going to be discussing that at length in a future video. But for me, as both a collector and someone who just loves shooting 9mm PCCs, I love having a variety of different platforms to shoot. And even though I love my MP5s, my MPX, my CMMG Banshees, CZ Scorpion is still an absolutely awesome platform that I love shooting. I can't wait to shoot it again soon. So that's going to be all for today, guys. We've got a lot more videos coming up soon, including more PCCs, ARs, AKs, handguns, and shotguns. Remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned, and thanks for stopping by.